From NBC News, this is Today. If you have trouble concentrating and are less productive than you'd like to be, it could be that you're struggling with something that most people associate with children in the classroom. Brian Nowartarski can remember the first time he thought he might have an attention disorder. My first grade teacher used to lock me in the um, uh, storage room. Uh, because, uh, you know, I was misbehaving, out of control. He was diagnosed with adult ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which causes a problem with inattentiveness, overactivity, impulsivity, or a combination of these, something adults may not realize that they have. As best as we can tell, about one in every 30, 33 adults will have ADHD, so about 3%. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a fraction of a percent that are actually being recognized and, and treated. Any ideas? This year, at an age of 46, Brian was first diagnosed with a disorder. Oh, yeah. Now, under treatment, he can recognize the signs and symptoms. The hardest part about having ADHD would be um, uh, just carrying on a conversation like this. Uh, that's one of the most difficult things. Um, and, and if you noticed, I, I just stopped and I had to repeat your question, okay? That's because another thought was going through my head. Mm -hmm. But it's not just conversations that people with attention deficit okay. disorders struggle with. They have an increased divorce rate and a higher likelihood of smoking and drinking excessively. Managing money can be difficult and they are more likely to have traffic citations and accidents. Something Brian has noticed in his own driving. You probably have more tickets for people who don't use their turn signal than probably anyone in the state of New York. You know, you're driving absentmindedly uh, to a certain extent. And while forgetting the turn signal has taken a toll on his wallet, Brian views some of his attention disorder as a positive. I have the ability to dream dreams and, and to daydream and to imagine, which inspires me to do things, uh, challenges that other people wouldn't take on. <sighs> <laughs> Today in iVillage is contributing psychiatrist Dr. Gail Saltz is here along with Dr. Edward Hollowell who is also a psychiatrist as well as the author of Delivered from Distraction. Good morning to both of you. Okay, so let's talk about this in real world. People don't want to know that they have it, but it's important as we just pointed out that if you have it, that you deal with it because it can hurt you in life. So let's talk about where it comes from. First of all, you say it's genetic. It, it is genetic. It's a, it's a trait that you're born with. Mm. Uh, most people who get diagnosed are children, but we want to emphasize today that a lot of adults out there are underachieving at work or in relationships because of undiagnosed attention deficit disorder. And why is it undiagnosed? I mean, you were saying to me earlier before uh, we went on television that this was something that has really come up uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s. This is a relatively new awareness that we have that people get exactly. this. Exactly, and people think of it as a child's diagnosis. So a lot of adults who had it as children but weren't diagnosed because there wasn't so much awareness when they were kids were missed along the way. They just thought they were bad students or lazy people. How and now they're realizing that it could be something else. How prevalent is this? Well, it depends on what study, but roughly 5% of the population. So we're talking about millions of people, not just a few people. And, and, and particularly the adults who have it need to know about it because they may think, I'm struggling at work or in relationships because I just can't get my act together. I'm disorganized, I'm late, I postpone, and I have flashes of brilliance. That's the typical pattern. And, and, and they say, oh, I just must try harder. Well, that's like trying to squint harder instead of getting eyeglasses. And actually, this would cause a great deal of suffering because here you are looking at yourself and you're comparing yourself to other people you don't know you have something and you're feeling bad about it. like why can't I why can't I why can't I so let's help people let's find out then how do you know you should go in and get tested what is the test well if you are an underachiever if you do find yourself late to everything feeling disorganized um, having trouble I mean, staying focused on tasks everybody well, really, but you know. if you're really you clearly are not meeting your needs at work and in relationships then you need to see a trained professional and trained professional is really the key here you need to see somebody who has worked with who knows how to diagnose attention deficit Is it a disorder. psychiatrist or a psychologist? Or Best case scenario is a psychiatrist. Many psychologists are also very good at this. And how do you do this? How do you test it? Well, you can, it, it's basically the history. But, and, but, and also, remember, this is common among high-functioning executives, business people. I saw right. someone yesterday in my office in New York from Wall Street doing really well, but having trouble with these details, with, with, the, with the boring part of work, the paperwork. So, so it's not just people who are languishing. People who are succeeding big time mm -hmm. uh, can also, entrepreneurs, CEOs, can also 
also have this this very interesting okay, condition. Okay, but people may not want the stigma. Okay, so they may say, why? If I find out about it, what's yeah. the good that's going to happen? What the good is, you can go from here to here. You can go from achieving sort of to big time achievement. Because you do what to them? What do you do you to help people? You get mental focus. You you gain mental focus. And because you're taught what? Well, they, they're they're basically tools. They're training skills. They are behavioral techniques that you can be taught to deal with whatever your particular. And there is really a range here. So some people are going to have more difficulty with with focusing and attention. Other people are going to have lower frustration tolerance. So depending on what it is that is your vulnerability, you will learn tools to deal with that. Specifically. So know your weakness and then realize your strengths. And, and, and develop your strengths. Right. And, and by taking care of the relative weakness, your strengths can become huge, big time. Dr. Hollowell, Dr. Saltz, thank you both so much. Thank you so much. I think we've helped people this morning. And still to come today.